Welcome back to Educator. In this lecture, we're going over the big words. Now, before we get into this actual lesson matter, it's very important that we understand why do we have to understand big words at all. Well, the first reason is this. Areas of specialization have their own special vocabulary. So if I'm going to talk about something like literature, I'm going to talk about the denim wa, I'm going to talk about allegory, I'm going to talk about simile. If I'm talking about science, I'm going to talk about hypothesis and theory. Guess what? They don't mean the same thing. And if I can understand both those two technical big words, maybe I can understand this other one called paradigm. Maybe I'm taking one of the computer science courses here at Educator, and I need to understand what an object is, what a packet is, what an algorithm is. These are all specialized words that will take time to understand. Another big reason for understanding specialized words and big words is for questions like this one right here. Let's look at it together. While traveling, the tourist blank the ticket broker over a disagreement with a blank fee. So I have a couple options here. I maybe am thinking challenge and exhortive, maybe confided and superlative, maybe I mean lauded and contractual, maybe exhorted and customary. Are any of these words right here words that you've never seen before? Maybe you've never heard of superlative before? Or maybe you don't understand what lauded means? If you understood what these words mean, the right answer would jump right out at you. But if you don't, then you have to use certain tricks. Of course, it's always good to just have a great big vocabulary so that you can answer the 20 questions on your time test like this very quickly and move on to the next thing. Now, when we're reading and we run across a big word, there's a couple intuitive knee-jerk reactions that everybody has. First thing we do is we just ignore it. We just pretend like the word isn't there or that we're somehow magically going to understand what the meaning is later. Or maybe we're just going to take a completely random, uneducated guess as to what it means. The first instinct reaction that every person has is not the best reaction that we should have when we run to a word we don't use. If we do run to a word that we don't know, Here's what we should do. We can use a dictionary. We can look for root words, and we can infer from the context. I'm going to give you an overview of what each one of these is over the next couple slides. Here is our big scary word, and I've picked a hard one. In his book, Four Arguments for the Elimination of Television, Jerry Mander argues that television is ontologically evil. What does ontologically mean? Dictionary, root words, and context.